Good morning, everyone. We're going to start right on time because uh, we had neglected, we, we need to make up some time because we had neglected to do build in introductions <laughs> into the agenda. So welcome. My name is Ann Hale miller -Acy. I'm the founder and CEO of the Radiant Earth Foundation, and we're super pleased to be able to um, schedule and organize this convening. Um, we hope that Thursday afternoon, we can all reflect and say that it was an excellent use of our time uh, collaboratively. What I'd like to do though first is go around the room and have everyone just briefly introduce themselves and the organizations that they represent so we can begin to get to know each other. So I'll start with my colleague, Hamet. Great, thank you. So we've got a full room, we've got a very uh, global audience and participants and so I, we thank all of you for participating over the next two and a half days. I want to take just a few minutes to talk about Radiant Earth Foundation and our vision and mission. As many of you are aware, we made a major pivot uh, last May. We had previously been focused on building an open platform software with open data in it, primarily focused on the global development community. In the three years that were two years that we did that, we uh, started and we were the only one out there and Two years later, we looked around and there were 13 other commercial entities uh, supplying uh, similar products and services. But what we had seen in that two, two and a half years was a, a crying need kind of around the issue of machine learning and earth observations. And so last May, we, we turned the entire organization around, created a new strategic plan uh, with new objectives. And that's what I want to share with you uh, this morning. So all of us in this room uh, know this story. Um, some of us have been around uh, since the first Landsat flu many, many years ago and have seen how much has changed in our profession. I know and my team probably gets sick of me saying this, but I remember when I bought my first gigabyte of data in 1987 from Digital Equipment Corporation, which no longer exists, I don't believe, uh, one gigabyte of data was $27,000, right? Right, $27,000 running on a fax. Um, and, you know, I joke that I was traveling through an airport not too long ago and bought a 15 gig uh, jump drive for $45, and that was still highway robbery, as Joe, I'm assuming, would agree. Um, but so much has changed. Storage, the amount of data that we have, the spatial, spectral, and temporal resolution, both from the public sector as well as the private sector. And you intersect that with machine learning, and I honestly believe that there is just tremendous opportunity for us to improve lives and our environment. But there is this pr problem of having um, training data, and open models, and so that's where we have focused our efforts going forward. I would argue, although Hamed and I disagree a little bit on this, and he usually wins any technical argument, that we're still at the very, very early days uh, in machine learning on Earth observations. And uh, we have an opportunity to set a very strong foundation uh, for this science and for this technology. If we carefully move together, forward as a community. Um, and so that's why we have focused our efforts with a vision of leveraging machine learning and earth observations for positive global impact. With a mission specifically of uh, creating open earth observation training data, working collaboratively on standards and tools to cultivate the global community to focus on machine learning and earth observations to meet the world's most critical challenges. How do we do that? <clears throat> I think it's simply put on uh, creating a repository and helping to build the community around open training data and open science models and algorithms. Um, that's what this effort is about here uh, this week uh, around the training data and what we need to do there. Um, in participating and leading in community best practices and, and best standards, um, I think the best example, not the only example though, is our effort to work with the community and help organize the community around the spatial temporal asset catalog 
which I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about today. There have been many, many organizations that have worked on that just collaboratively over the last 18 months. Uh, we've had a number of sponsors make it possible for us to host, you know, two-day uh, workshops and to host a number of dinners and receptions. Uh, so it really has been a community effort. We've just, I think, been able to supply the organizing glue to move it forward. Um, and this, I would argue, is one of our initiatives to hold workshops like this as a neutral entity, as a nonprofit, to bring together the public sector, the private sector, the acad and academicians um, to, to build these best practices. And finally, um, to, to publish and to write about Earth observations uh, and machine learning. Our particular focus there will be on the global development community and in the global south. So <clears throat> Hamad is going to go into much uh, uh, more detail on our specific offerings around Radiant ML Hub. But having been in this business for more than 30 years, my observations around there are still old problems that persist. Um, connectivity is still a problem for much of the global south. Uh, while I think we're all hopeful that uh, the new low Earth orbit communication satellites are going to help solve some of those problems, I think we're still five to 10 years away from really uh, being able to claim some sort of victory on the connectivity in the global south. The one that interests me most and has been around since I started my career in 1985 is the collaboration and data sharing from an institutional perspective, not a technical perspective. It used to be that it was wickedly difficult to share your data physically. Now we know that's not so much a problem, but the institutional issues around sharing and behavioral issues around sharing data continue to persist. And, and finally, uh, capacity development. Capacity development has always been an issue. Uh, we are certainly um, blessed in this country and in Europe and many other countries around the globe, but in the global south, I think we need to really double down on, on working on those issues. But I also see new problems emerging, um, problems that can be solved. Uh, the pro one of the problems that we're in this room for over the next two and a half days around data standards and access, um, around open models and benchmarks, um, around machine learning accuracy assessment, these problems can be solved as a community. Uh, and that's why we're here sponsoring this event. Um, new problem popped up three weeks ago. I don't know how many of you are aware of that. The ITAR regulations that were published by the Department of Commerce um, are, were very unexpected by industry. Um, I met last week with the uh, president's advisor on space and the advisor uh, for uh, the Department of Commerce who published those regulations. If you haven't seen them and you're a U.S. company, I strongly suggest that you review them and that you comment, um, but they um, clearly are may be able to restrict the distribution of machine learning software in the future from any U.S. company. Um, and then another topic that I believe you'll see ready and start to focus on a good bit and hold similar uh, forums to one like this, and that is around the ethics and issues of privacy in geospatial technologies generally and in machine learning specifically. So um, I hope that gives you a little bit of feel for who we are and what we do. Um, before I turn it over uh, to Manil, though, <laughs> I do want to thank uh, a number of people in this room for helping pull this together. Um, from a technical perspective, Hamed and Louisa did 90% of the hard work and have done an excellent job. I told them, in fact, last Friday, Louisa and I were in the office and neither one of us was nervous. We're like, we're, we're actually ready. <laughs> it's like, we're ready three, four days early. Um, so they've done a great job. We want to thank NASA. Uh, for your sponsorship and making this possible. I um, want to thank Lyndon Estes and Clark University, who's made the reception this evening possible. IEEE for their participation. And um, as you've already know, Tom Snitch is a member of this community and also a member of this club. Uh, so if there are any problems, complain to Tom. 
right? All right. So with that, I'll turn it over to our colleague from NASA, uh, Manil Maskey. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Manil Maskey, and uh, Kevin Murphy, the program executive, was supposed to uh, be giving this talk, uh, but he had an emergency this morning, so he couldn't be here. So I'm try to, I'll try to uh, convey his message here. Uh, uh, first, uh, from the Earth Science Data Systems perspective, I'm, I'm, I want to welcome everybody and, 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 and thank Hamed and Radiant Earth for putting together this workshop and hopefully uh, it will guide us uh, for our future uh, uh, strategy from a data systems perspective and where we should be uh, focusing on. So uh, the Earth Science Data Systems uh, manages uh, the single largest repository of earth science data, uh, which includes multivariate heterogeneous data from various different uh, uh, types of platforms, uh, including satellite, institute measurements, uh, airborne data, uh, but all. And we do this with, uh, with the open, uh, science, uh, open science policy, meaning that we have uh, uh, our data and software uh, available at, at, for, for as an open source, right? Uh, and we've been doing that for a long time now. Um, you can see the uh, the result of uh, uh, of those policies uh, re uh, reflected on many of the research and, and uh, applications. So this is the obligatory chart that uh, a chart that uh, we always show in terms of uh, how many uh, uh, satellite missions are there in, in, in a given time, right? So in, in, uh, in, in green, you see are the current uh, active missions. Um, in blue, you see uh, the missions that have been uh, uh, in extended operation, meaning we still collect the data from there. Um, you see in purple, the upcoming missions uh, that are in uh, implementation phase. And, 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 and uh, in yellow, you see some pre-formulation. On the left-hand side, you also see our partnership with the uh, uh, International Space Station, which uh, also hosts a lot of our payloads. Um, uh, on, on the bottom, you see some collaboration uh, with NOAA uh, in the JPSS. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, this uh, short missions, the CubeSat missions that you see on the right. Um, so, so uh, you see the the the. Uh, uh, the amount of data that, that has been collected, right? So how do we manage that? So you can see this uh, animation, the, uh, the amount of data that we're collecting and the size of the archive that's growing, right? Uh, here we are today, about five petabytes of data that we're collecting, but in a couple of years, it's gonna be around 50 petabytes per year, right? So there's a lot of data. Um, so how are we uh, preparing for that? Um, so we have a cloud initiative, the Earth Data Cloud Initiative, uh, where we're trying to move most of our data and operations into the cloud. Uh, this is all to uh, help uh, drive the science research, uh, still research and application while still continuing to provide free and open access to the data. Right? Uh, we also want to provide uh, opportunity for researchers and commercial users to access the data and not have to worry about data management while uh, putting all the data in one place. And we wanna do this still in the open source framework. So we have a lot of data, but uh, we also need a way to uh, exploit that more efficiently, right? So this is our uh, ES, our science data systems uh, AI ML vision, uh, is to harness AI ML to advance our science data systems, right? What does that really mean? Uh, it means to develop, rap, uh, develop and rapidly prototype innovative ML solutions, uh, develop AI-ready uh, data sets, which we're gonna focus on uh, next uh, couple of days, uh, create a common framework that uh, enables decentralized development and sharing of those data and model. We also wanna share our lessons learned and, and scale the prototypes that we develop over time. And ultimately, we also wanna partner and learn from private sectors, academia, and international partners. But uh, why do you want to do uh, ML for science data systems, right? Um, we want to increase the speed of science 
um, in the growing archives, right? It will be more data driven than hypothesis driven going forward. So we want to, um, one of the enabling techniques uh, to do data driven science is the machine learning, right? So we want to help researchers do that. Um, we also want to improve our operations, uh, help search and discovery and access of this data uh, more efficient. Um, we also want to test uh, in, across disciplines, we want to test uh, uh, machine learning with uh, uh, better, better forecasting, better classification, recommendations, predictions, right? If you can test the boundaries of those. Um, going to the cloud means that we have more ML ready, um, uh, we, we can scale our machine learning more efficiently uh, with the data co-located at the same place as computation. Um, and we, we want to take advantage of all these data being together, uh, 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 all kinds of data, right? Multiple types of measurements uh, and unique opportunity for innovate, uh, innovating new ways of analysis of pain and valuable insights. So we conducted, sorry. So um, in terms of challenges, we've conducted uh, workshops before and we've uh, funded some directed uh, uh, efforts that has suggested that training data is a bottleneck, right? Main bottleneck. Um, in data system side, there are also heterogeneous types of data sets. We have lots of data that is untapped uh, for, for creating these training data sets. Um, we also wanna support new types of algorithms and, uh, and models uh, in the cloud platform, right? And how do we do that? And we also want, uh, uh, there are challenges in collaboration and because it's a, such a uh, cross domain uh, 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 effort to do uh, machine learning uh, within our science. Uh, we want to foster that uh, uh, collaboration, but there are challenges there too, right? So uh, that's the last slide uh, that Kevin has. Uh, the idea was he was going to go over the high level thing and I was going to go into detail. So it will be my slides next. <laughs> 